My research that revealed the existence of epigenetics was done in 1967. The science of epigenetics was 1990. So I was 23 or four years ahead of conventional science. So disease is disharmony in the world and health is harmony. So when we find ourselves in a state of illness or disease, we don't need drugs necessarily to help us. We can change our, our world view, how we live and how we respond to the world because the problem that we have is not in the genes, but in how we respond to the environment. Change your environment and you change your genes. In 1967, I was cloning stem cells. Stem cells are like embryonic cells. And my research revealed that the culture environment, the culture medium, was directly controlling the genetics. And just to bring this into people, people are like skin-covered Petri dishes because we are made out of 50 trillion cells. The cells live inside the environment, but the fluid in the environment we call blood is, in, is like the aquarium in which the cells live. The chemical composition of the blood determines the fate of the cells, whether it's in a plastic dish or a skin-covered dish. So basically, we've been saying the genes are in control, but now we know the environment is controlling gene activity. Most people think that cancer genes cause cancer. The truth is no gene causes cancer. Genes are correlated with cancer. Cancer is a consequence of not living in harmony with your world, living in anger or fear. These are issues that strain the body and these issues then cause an alteration of our genetic reading. And that's why cancer can be cured in what they call spontaneous remission, meaning all I do is change my belief and the cancer can disappear. That's an example to show you that belief is primary, genes are secondary. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, the practice of allopathic medicine is listed as the third cause of death behind cancer and cardiovascular disease. To me, when the health industry is the third leading cause of death, I think it's time to question the system. In the world of communication and biology, uh, there are two ways you can try to treat somebody with a physical chemical drug to change their biology or you can alter the energy field. When compared, the chemistry healing versus the energy healing, the energy healing uh, is about a hundred times more efficient than chemical healing and it's also infinitely faster. So in the world of quantum mechanics, energy is the preferred way of introducing healing to the body rather than chemistry. The science of how powerful we are over the genes, how we control the genes is a very important insight because that returns power to us so that we can manage our life rather than to be the victim of our chemistry and our genes. That is important and also to me because I was not spiritual as a scientist but acquired an understanding of that spirituality through my research. To me, showing a scientific connection uh, between spirit and body, to me is most important because science is the language that people believe in. Science to people is truth. If science can show or support the nature of spirit, then we can get the public to understand this. And what's important to me is, Spirit is just a, an old-fashioned term for the modern concept of quantum physics in the field. So uh, spirit becomes scientific. And once you have that, it's very empowering. And it also frees you up because our biggest concern on this planet is fear. Fear of death, fear. And if you can eliminate that fear, we can all have a happy, healthier life on this planet.